Right, let me just ask you this one last question. Uh, you did say some migrants are coming home tonight uh, from Libya. Uh, this later, with this latest report from Algeria now, are, are there any plans to bring home uh, Nigerians and other African migrants from Algeria? Well, yes. Um, we have been, as you know, since late last year, there was a surge in anti-migrant uh, sentiment in uh, uh, Algeria. And because of that, the government has been pushing back a lot of uh, sub-Saharan uh, migrants to Niger. So a lot of the returnees uh, from sub-Sahara are returned from Liberia, from Algeria, to Niger. So we are actually um, engaged uh, in the effort to bring the, the migrants that are in, uh, in Algeria to Niger, because that's, that's the process, that's where we, uh, uh, that's where the government of Algeria usually send them back to the border. And once they are in Niger, we work with our office in Niger to bring them back home to Nigeria or to the, to the various countries. But uh, as, as we see uh, with Algeria, most of the um, returns happen to Niger. Now, if it's necessary, and if we, uh, as you uh, know, we, we've identified about 75,000 migrants in, in Algeria. And if it's necessary, and if we have a critical mass, it, it's quite possible we may look into special chartered flight to bring them home. But uh, as, it, as it relates to chartered flight, we've been focusing on, uh, uh, on Libya. Right, thank you so much, uh, Franz Celestine, uh, for talking to us on Network Africa. Thank you very much for having me. Let's move on now. In South Sudan, a ceasefire monitoring group has accused the country's armed forces of violence against civilians, including women and children, after a supposed ceasefire with rebels in December. According to the Juba-based CTSAM a group uh, appointed by the a country's East African neighbors on a five-year-old civil war, rebels led by former Deputy President Rik Mashar made use of child soldiers, something his camp denies. South Sudan, which won independence from Sudan in 2011, has denied targeting civilians, describing the reports compiled in the last three months as exaggerated. The 14 reports have not been publicly released despite pledges by the leaders of South Sudan's neighbors to name those who violated the December ceasefire and punish them. Staying with that country, after peace talks failed in Ethiopia, Rik Zong Rik who is a refugee, says he has lost all hope. He was there when the latest peace summit collapsed in Addis Ababa, failing to find an end to his country's drawn-out crisis. South Sudan has been gripped by a civil war sparked by political rivalry between President Salva Kiir and his former deputy, Rik Machar. The 35-year-old moved to Addis Ababa, where he is sponsored by the United Nations Refugee Agency to try and secure asylum elsewhere for his wife and three daughters. Rick Zongrik fled his country when war broke out in 2013 to a refugee camp across the border in Ethiopia's Gambela region. As a child, I grew up in a war because we were fighting the Sudanese people for independence. There was fighting all the time in the villages every day. Nobody had a good time, no good life, no school. We never had a good time. Then there was peace after we negotiated with Sudan. Now, we have lost hope for our future. Since I was a child, I have not achieved anything as a person because we grew up in the war. Rick worked as a civil servant in Upper Nile State after South Sudan officially split from its northern neighbor, Sudan, in 2011. But despite several agreements and ceasefires, fighting rumbles on in South Sudan. Regional group Inigad has been helping to mediate and get South Sudan's warring parties to agree on power sharing and security arrangements. But the latest attempt to narrow the divide proved fruitless. We are tired of this peace process because it seems IGAD doesn't want to complete it. 
I wish the mediation would be taken away from IGAD because they spent five years talking about this and yet there is no peace. The refugees are suffering and our leaders in South Sudan, they don't care about us. Or the refugees, not even are suffering. Rick was one of several delegates representing Iban refugees at the talks. We lost hope. Our hope now that is the international community, if they put the good pressure with those warring fathers, maybe peace will come. If they didn't do it, South Sudan will not be a peaceful country. Barely two years into what many hoped was a first start, the world's youngest nation was gripped by conflict, this time sparked by political rivalry between President Salva Kiir and his former deputy, Rick Mashar. Tens of thousands have been killed by the fighting between troops loyal to Kiir and forces loyal to Mashar. In Kenya, hundreds of protesters marched through the streets of Nairobi against increased cases of high-level corruption. The protesters say they are angered by the corruption in the country and that no high-ranking official has been jailed. 24 civil servants and business people were charged on Tuesday with involvement in the theft of nearly $100 million of public funds and will stay in custody pending a June 4 hearing on the application for bail. The suspects, who include the Public Service Ministry's principal secretary, pleaded not guilty to charges that relate to theft at the government's National Youth Service. Kenyan authorities say it will also investigate 10 financial institutions suspected of handling funds that were stolen from the government's National Youth Service as well. Still to come on the program. The United Nations says conflict in DR Congo is forcing more children into cheap labor. That's in a moment. Do stay with us.